everybody, how's it going? Uh, my name is Melissa and this is my channel Geeky Witch about all things in my life cross stitch. Uh, today is September 18th, 2021. It's a Saturday and I'm sneaking a video in in the middle of my lunch break from a uh, stitching class I'm taking through the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild. So if I sound like I'm kind of rushing, I'm sorry. I'm not actually trying to get this whole video done at once, although if I do, awesome. Um, but I want to get it done while there's nobody else in my house because I don't get that very often and I'm sure many of you can relate in these COVID times. Um, anyway, uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. It's a little crazy around here. There's always a whole ton of different projects being shown. Uh, so welcome to the insanity. And if you're coming back to spend a little time with me, thanks for coming back over. I'd uh, love to hear from any of you and let's get to the stitching today. Um, at long last, I am doing the Wensler Whip Parade. Um, I had this recorded last weekend and then instead of deleting the accidental starts where I flub over what I want to say, I deleted the actual video, the entire video. Um, and everything's been sitting out on my pile to, you know, to show you. It's like, why well, put it away? Because I just want to film. Um, it's starting to make me itchy seeing all of my Wenzlers in a pile, unprotected and not in the project bags with this house of seven cats. Just saying. <laughs> so today it's getting done so I can put them away safely because, oh no, it's, it's a little scary having that many Wenzlers out in the open air at a time. Um, a little history with me with Teresa Wensler. Um, I have been stitching now for over 35 years. Um, I first learned of Teresa Wensler when I was in high school. So we're talking 1990-ish to date me. Um, and like many stitchers of my generation and of the, the Wensler generation of that time, my entry into Teresa Wensler projects was the castle. Um, her stuff at that time was completely different than most of the other stuff out there. Uh, she was blending threads, of course, and she's well known for her blending threads and her quarter stitches, but it was the detail of her projects back then because a lot of the stuff back then was a little simpler or straightforward, and her stuff was like a freaking medieval tapestry compared to the other stuff that was out there. It was really intricate. It was heirloom style stuff, and it definitely drew a different crowd. You know, nowadays we're blessed with so much cross stitch that is so diverse with tons of specialty stitches and tons of different flosses and all of this stuff. But back then it was a lot more limited, of course, because we didn't have the internet. Um, and we really were reliant upon if you had a local needle workshop or not. And I did not. I, I had Joann's and I had Ben Franklin. Those were my two craft stores and they were both small. And if it wasn't there, I couldn't get it. And I couldn't have told you where I could get it because I was in the middle of nowhere, Montana at the time. Um, but I was drawn to her stuff because of the fantasy and the dragons. And because uh, I was then and still am a big geek. And I was into my high school fantasy reading and all that at the time, which has never really gone away. Um, but I had to stitch the castle. I, I had to. And I picked it out and it was the third project I ever stitched on. Um, so anyone who tells you that a cross stitch piece is too hard or it looks too difficult, it's not. They're all X's. I, that I started that when I was 15, 16 and it was a slow roll and it was put away for a while and then it came back out and I used my hoop as a frisbee more than once off of my bed because I was pissed off at what I was doing, but I got through it and you can too. Don't be intimidated. They're X's like 
any other project. And don't be afraid if you stitch on Ada. You can stitch these. Some of them are going to be more difficult on Ada. Um, but as I'm going to show you, you can stitch a Wensler on Ada because I did. And a lot of us did back then because even Teresa Wensler admitted at the time, all she knew about was Ada. So you can do this. I promise you, really promise you, just sharp needle. And you might want to invest in uh, some sort of protection for your fingers. This is where a thimble might be handy. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the two pieces, the two large pieces I have done um, and have finished. And then I'm going to show you the pieces that are in my semi-active rotation this year, the ones I did really want to put some work into, and one small one I'm planning on finishing this year. And then I'm going to show you the ones that are in my current dormant uh, UFO unfinished project collection. And the only reason they're in that section right now is that I have decided to limit myself to how many Wenslers can make an appearance at a time. Um, if you listen to some of the other stitchers who are on FlossTube right now, especially my friend Amy at Gable Stitcher, she has what she calls legacy whips, which are her ones that she wants to finish, but she's only going to pull out a couple at a time, and she's not going to freak out that she has the pile there, because they're ones that were from before a certain period in her life, and they were stalled. That's what happened with my Wenzlers. They all stalled because I had my son. So, and got married, had a child, you know, the whole, yeah, got a house, the whole bit. So they stalled and I'm finding that it's better for me to just pull one out instead of all of them because then you just get into a glut. Um, so let's get started. I'm gonna show you the two that I finished first. Um, as you can see, I have a selection of piles of Wenzler here. So the first one I will show you is my castle. Now, this is stitched on 14 count Ada with the called for DMCs and all the blending. Um, I do know that some people put metallics in this. I did not, it's stitched straight from the chart. Um, I My chart is still around the house. It is in horrific shape and it's in a folder somewhere. I don't know where, but I can zoom this in for you. So you can see, you know, my tension's a little iffy here and there, but I started this when I was 15 or 16. Um, I started on the castle, I worked up, and then I finished the bottom. Um, so I have this dated as I started about 1990, 1991, and I finished this in 2006. Uh, it was probably the first piece that I consider like a memory uh, piece because I can tell you exactly where I was stitching a whole ton of sections of this. This got me through high school and, you know, boyfriend breakups. It got me through college and it got me through the beginning of my relationship with my husband. And it finally ended the week that we moved into our house. And that's when I finished. But like I said, you can stitch a Wensler on Ada because look, this is on 14 count. If you don't believe me, I'll zoom it way in and you can see the squares. Um, yes, there is staining on this. It unfortunately sat in a hoop <laughs> for many, many years in a box and I didn't know it was there unfinished. Um, but, and as you can see, it's still not framed, but that's mostly just because until a few years ago, I wasn't framing anything. That will be changing eventually because this needs to go on my wall. So that's that one. And if you're ever worried about stitching on Ada or you need a pep talk ten, with a Wensler, contact me. I, I will bring out the pom-poms and I will cheer you on to the end of your days, I promise you. So that's that one. 
Um, the next one I will show you is a more recent finish. I adopted this for my friend Jen in about 2005, which is when I discovered the Teresa Wensler boards on, I think it was Easy Board at the time. I don't know. They changed names 85,000 times. Um, but there was a board there and there were a lot of people who had started a bunch of Wenslers in the like late 90s, early 2000s. And then they probably started too many of them or they just decided I'm, I don't want to deal with this. And they were starting to ask people to adopt them. And so a good chunk of my Wenslers back here actually are adopted pieces from folks on those boards. And I just, I, I then became the glut of them and I haven't finished them. But this is one I have finished. And this is one of my bigger projects finished to date. Um, this is on a 26, or sorry, 28 count antique white even weave. It probably was originally white uh, with the charted DMC. And this is floral bell pull. And it is a long piece. So I am going to show you a square at a time because there's six of them. So there up to the rose, the sweet pea. Ah, the morning glory, which oddly was the one that stalled me out for a long time. I don't know why, but this is where I got stuck. Then, uh, contrary to the pattern, the, the, picture on the pattern, I accidentally stitched the peony next. And finally, the pansy. I just reversed those last two, but who really cares, right? So I'll come back down. And this is in DMC. This time, of course, on even weave, uh, stitch two over two with the back stitching. Uh, the amount of greens and blended greens in here is insane. But I'm very proud of this one. And I'll just, I normally don't stand up. Um, but yeah, I can't even show it all on screen if I stand up. I have to go way back here. Yeah. So that's how big this one is. Um, like I said, I adopted this from my friend Jen C in about 2005-ish. And I finished this in uh, June of 2019. It was a very, very proud finish. Uh, this one went on a round robin where a group of us did a unfinished object round robin where we all picked a piece and we rotated it around. There were either six or eight of us. And so like every like eight weeks, you'd send it on to the next person. So, um, and they would work on it for a little bit and then it would go on to the next person just to kind of give your piece a boost to get you past maybe where you were stuck. So in my case, um, the rose, well, Jen stitched most of this herself. The rose was stitched on the round robin and part of Sweet Pea was stitched on the round robin and then I picked it up from there and the rest of it is mine. So it is not completely stitched by me, but it's mine. Uh, the only reason that I won't put this, oh, there we go. I can actually do it sideways. Um, the only reason I don't enter this into a fair is because I can't take credit for all the stitching. I didn't do it all. So I don't feel it's right for me to take the credit at a fair but it is going to be finished. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna do it as an actual bell pull on the wall or if I'll frame it. I'm thinking I probably will frame it only because of my cats. Um, there is, of course, a fruit bell pull that is the tandem project and the, you know, the sister project to this one. I have it in my stash, but I don't have it kitted and I don't know if I'll ever get to it. Uh, like I said, I want to get through the rest of these first before I kit anything else up. So that is Floral Bell Pull, and those are my two big finishes. Now, I have finished a number of the ornaments, especially the freebie ornaments that she has on her website. 
Uh, they're usually like little teaching pieces for some of her other bigger pieces. And they're often like the little capstones on the borders, on the, the corners, uh, to teach you a little bit of the specialty stitches. If you're looking for a little project to do for a Teresa Wensler to get a hang of how she does her things, I really recommend those. They're they're not that big. They're absolutely gorgeous. They look super intricate, and maybe they are a little intricate, but they just they look gorgeous when you get them done. And once you feel comfortable with them, you'll just fly through other stuff for Teresa. So I've done a number of those ornaments, but almost all of the ones I've done, I've done for exchanges. So my stitching, I don't even have them on my own tree. Um, all of mine have gone literally across the globe. One went to the Ukraine, one went to um, Australia. I think one's gone to New Zealand. So mine have gone all over the place and I haven't kept a lot for myself. That's something that will be changing because I do want to stitch a set of them for my own tree eventually. Um, but the father, the father winter ornament I really, really like, and the peacock tapestry ornament I really, really like. Play with the colors. You can make them Christmassy all you want. Uh, the beginner white work is super easy to do, and you can't go wrong in any color scheme you do it. It's a great piece for like, if you've got floss you don't know what to do with, do that white work ornament. And then all of a sudden you have a really fancy ornament. Alrighty, so let me go on to, now I'm gonna do the pile that is pieces that I'm in active rotation with. These are ones that I've, I've touched both of them this year. I've touched two of them this year. The third one I have not worked on yet, but it is an ornament and I want it on my tree this year. And I don't have much left to do. So I think like Thanksgiving weekend, that's probably what I'm gonna be working on to finish it up. Um, so let me bring that pile up. It's a pile, small pile of three. Easy pile. Um, and you've seen two of these three in other videos that I've done this year. So, and I have not worked on them since those videos. So I apologize for a little bit of a repeat here. Uh, the first one is Egyptian Sampler. As you can see my copy is getting well worn because they do. Um, zoom that in a little bit here. I started my copy of it in July of 2005, although I bought the um, chart probably a couple of years before that. Mine is on 28 count linen. I don't know who the dyer was. Um, I bought it off a bolt at one of the stitching stores and it was before I really kept records of that. Um, it's not Zweigart. I know that for a fact. It's kind of an antique -y color and it definitely has a rougher feel to it. Um, so I'm not quite sure who it is, but I bought the, the linen back in 2002, 2003. So who the heck knows if it's one that's even around anymore. Um, I am doing it in the charted DMC as written. And this is where I'm at. Apology for the fold line. So this year I have done border um, and literally all of, I've done only border this year. Um, I have not put in a single quarter stitch on this piece and to do that many stitches in a Wensler without a quarter sti stitch is a uh, accomplishment. But yes, this is stitched over two. Uh, there is a, I don't think I've done a single color yet that is not blended on this. <laughs> Um, I've started some of the outlining on that center panel, but it's not done yet by any stretch. And I did frog out a big portion here because I totally miscounted that wing. So that will be going back in in a little bit. And that's why there is a gap over here because there is a, it's uh, these guys are there. So there is a gap intentionally in the, in the frame. But this is the next piece that I'm really focusing on uh, to complete. Uh, so pretty much any other Wensler other than the little ornament that I'm going to show you in a moment, th this 
piece is coming priority before anything else. Uh, this is the next one I want done. And uh, I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with what I've gotten done this year on it. Uh, I do expect to get back to it a little bit more this year. Um, I'll probably just continue to fill in, you know, the, the squares on the border. But I don't expect to get a whole ton more done by the end of the year. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the next piece was pulled out of my stash for... Um, Abby Bella Stitches Stitch Asia at the beginning of the year. And this is Celestial Dragon. Um, I adopted my, not my chart, I had the chart, um, but I adopted the piece from a stitcher named Stacy about five years ago, four or five years ago. Uh, she was getting rid of her stash because her site had just gotten to a point where stitching was not enjoyable for her anymore. So she wanted things to go to homes of people who could still enjoy them. Um, I've, I've had my chart for a long time and it had been in my list to start anyway. So again, to adopt a piece that was already started, awesome. Um, mine is on 28 count white. It is an even weave and it is with the charted DMCs and the charted metallics. Um, and oh, this one has gotten catted, so there's a little bit of cat fur. Like I said, they've been out in the open air, which makes me a little nervous. <laughs> so this is where this one stands currently. Um, as you can see, there, if I move this up and down, there's a bunch of sparkle in that dragon. There is not any sparkle up here in the square. Um, the dragon head is what Stacy had done herself. Uh, everything up here is what I have done so far. And I will probably work the rest of the border first before I get back to the dragon. Mostly because I'm, I, I'm not a, f a fan of Krynik. <laughs> so I'll be putting it off. Uh, but it is a gorgeous piece. And it is going to be absolutely stunning when it's done. Um, this year, I've pretty much focused on that blue square, and then I started to make the run here, so I'm going to start building this down this way. But that is where that is. Um, but like I said, that one is, it was really, I hadn't planned on stitching on that this year, and that was just pulled out for Stitch Asia, so I've put a little bit into it. And not as much as I'd hoped for Stitch Asia, but Stitch Asia is kind of just a perpetual thing now. So I think I'll probably bring it out and it'll become like a Lunar New Year celebration project for me every year. And probably, maybe I'll, maybe I'll celebrate a couple of the different Asian culture days to pull it out for going forward. Uh, you know, like some for Japan and some for down in Thailand and through Vietnam and Indonesia and whatnot. Maybe I'll pull out some fun holidays and just pull that out once in a while for Stitch Asia days. Um, I, but I have no timeline right now to finish that one. So hopefully sometime in the next decade. Depends on how long I'm getting frustrated with Egyptian Sampler. Um, my next one, I started... And I really, I did all of this really in one year. I started this in 2015. I didn't write it down on my page. Uh, 2015, 2016. Um, I had always planned to stitch this if I had a child. And when I had my son, it was a go-to. Um, I waffled on how I was going to finish it. So it's been sitting lingering, not finished for a while because I thought I might put like a birth sampler thing together for it and kind of design my own thing. But then I just, I stitched my son's birth sampler. So there's no point in me doing two of them. Um, so I'm going to make it into an ornament. And this is You Were Hatched. This was a special edition release. And obviously because it is a dragon and Teresa has discontinued all of her dragons for religious re reasons, um, this is probably one of 
the hardest charts to get a hold of. Um, there were only 1,000 printed. My copy is 791 out of 1,000. I lucked out buying this. Yes, you can see how much it cost me, $4.50. Um, <laughs> I, I bought mine at a stitching shop north of Boston uh, in Arlington, Mass., when I was in, I want to say it was just after college. Um, it says it's 2004. So I I guess, was it that late? I guess it was. Um, so I already knew Eric at that point. Um, but yes, this is from Fantasy Fair. And it is kind of one of those pieces that Wensler fans are trying to grab. Um, I stitched most of mine in about a month and a half. And it is on 28 count uh, linen and in the called for DMCs. So the entire dragon is done. The only thing missing off of mine are the, um, the knot work on the outside. Everything else is done. Um, I didn't have the floss for the knot work because it actually is done in a silk. Um, but like I said, when I originally had planned to do this, I had thought about creating a birth sampler off the side of it, which is why it's on such a big piece of linen. Um, but now that I have his uh, birth sampler, that won't be happening. So I'm going to finish it. I just need to get those uh, knot work on the sides, and then I will finish it however it calls me to finish it. But yeah, there's a lot of detail in that. And for those who wonder what the back of a Wensler wind up looking like, there you go. Not too, too bad, honestly. So that's, you were hatched. So you will see that finished by Christmas because it will be done by Christmas. All right, so that is my pile of current Wenzlers that are in active duty. The rest of the ones that I have are in long-term unfinished object or UFO status. Um, I do not consider UFOs projects that I've abandoned. Uh, all UFOs mean to me is that they're just kind of in a holding pattern. Um, I perfectly intend to get back to all of my UFOs. But, you know, there's only so many you can stitch on at a time. And as you've if you watch my other episodes, um, I stitch on a lot and I change a lot. So limiting it down to one or two of one designer just makes sense because you want to get the variety in there. And if I pull out all of the Wenzlers, that's going to be all of my stitching time to the end of time. Um, and I want to stitch on a little bit of everything. So let me get that pile out. And this is, of course, the biggest pile. And hopefully I don't drop anything because I do have a couple of books open here. Oops. All right, where can, I, where can I safely put this so I can show them? Okay, so the first piece I have to show you is Millennium. Now, this piece obviously was printed for the year 2000. Um, everything that you see here, all of these planets are done over one. Um, the rest of it is stitched two over two. Um, I, again, bought the chart on my own, but adopted somebody's piece. I don't, unfortunately, have it recorded who I adopted it from, and I apologize if you recognize it. And um, I don't say your name because, again, this was before we were keeping records of this in floss tube and whatnot. Um, but I would have adopted it about 2005 again. And it's gotten a little work here and there over the years, but not that much because I was focused on finishing the castle and then I was focused on floral bell pull and then focused on getting married. And it fell off. So... This is on a 28 count white even weave with the called for DMCs. Um, most of the work that you see here was done by somebody else. 
um, but I did work a bit on that angel on the side. And I'll probably, I'm going to finish that angel and then I'll get to work on the center before I do the other angel, just to take a break from the light colors. But that's where this one stands. Um, my one plan is that obviously it's, it kind of seems pointless to do it for the millennium at this point, since we're 21 years in. Um, Although I may, I may still keep the AD 2000 at the top just because it, the name of the piece is Millennium. Um, but I will be changing the verse down here. Uh, the verse that's on it is, With the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Um, being that I am not Christian in my beliefs, um, it doesn't fit appropriately to me, but I couldn't tell you what I'm going to change it to yet. That, that'll that be when I get down to stitching it and what is striking me as appropriate at the time. So, but one more look at that one. And so that is Millennium. All right. Next on my pile is Magical Night. And that has gotten work on it a little more recently. Um, my copy of the chart is from the original fantasy collection book. Um, as you can see, my copy is getting nice and worn. It's been well loved. I bought this when it first came out. Um, this is out of print, but they do come up on eBay and on some of the stitching for sale sites. Um, the original book cost 20 bucks. I've seen every price under the sun for it right now. Um, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's not that hard to get a copy of it, but it's, it costs a bit nowadays. And the kicker is you used to be able to find this thing sitting at Michael's. Like it just sat there. No one was buying it for years. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're getting gobbled up. Anyway, so this is the book. And Magical Night sometimes gets mixed up as a title called Midnight Ride. And I'm not sure if it was misprinted that way or if it's just what some of us have nicknamed it. Um, someone on my, on my Teresa Wensler group actually called it that recently in a post. They were asking for it. And I immediately knew what she was talking about. And the funny thing is my brain has switched it to the word Midnight Ride. And I don't know why. It's called Magical Night. But this is the name of the piece. This is the piece. It has a very, I've always seen it as a very heavy, almost like a Russian influence for some reason. It just strikes me that way. And I don't know why. Um, but with the two Pegasus... Pegasi, Flying the Sleigh. Um, the original, let me find it here in the book. Oh, yes, and my, of course my dragon is in there as well, but that's not where I stitched my dragon from. Um, <laughs> uh, the original was on 25 count Pewter Lugana, uh, which would make this sucker huge. Um, mine is on 28 count. It's a Zweigart. It's probably Silk Weaver. Um, Opal over dye. Um, this was another piece I believe I adopted. I don't think I started this one by myself. It has gone around for another one of those UFO round robins. And as you can see, I'm pretty far along on it. Um, I really have the horses to do. It's a absolutely beautiful piece and it's kind of an unusual colors for a Wensler. Wensler has a, especially with the dragons anyway, has, you can almost pull the same 20 colors out of the DMC bins. Um, and they're in every single dragon. She has a very firm palette that she used. Um, this one, of course, started going a lot more pink and a lot more purple. 
but it's a gorgeous piece. Um, this one will, since it's further along, will probably be one of the Wenzlers I do um, a little more, uh, it, it'll be higher on the pile, let me put it that way. So that's that one. Um, I don't know if this was ever released as a sing. I would assume it was released as a single chart. Um, since it does not have dragons on it, you might be able to find it somewhere. It, it would still be, I think it's still under Leisure Arts, but you could check patterns online because she has released quite a few of them. And because it's not a dragon, it might be there. Um, but don't quote me on that because I haven't bought I, I already had all of these, so I really haven't bought much off of Patterns Online of hers. All right, the next one I have is Legends of the Dragons. And this was a piece that was a joint piece between Teresa and uh, Dragon Dreams and Black Swan Designs. So... It's, it's probably, if you're familiar with the designers, it's probably really easy to figure out whose is whose. Uh, but Wisdom is Teresa's. Dragon Dreams is in the center as Magic. And Black Swan is Majesty over here. Um, this was started for a stitch along. And I started it in about 2009. Um, there were a number of us who were, it was a, Pick one of the uh, charts that was a collaboration piece between Black Swan, Dragon Dreams, and Teresa Wensler. Uh, there were, I want to say three of these. There's the Legends of the Dragons. There's a Magician one. And then there's one with just like heartfelt sayings on it. Um, and we were doing a stitch along on the boards, picking one of those three pieces, whichever one spoke to you. Uh, to stitch on for stitch along and I am doing mine it's on a piece of silk weaver um, unfortunately again I don't know the color but it is light purple uh, this is on an even weave this is an old silk weaver so it's not since the boys at Nino Workers Delight have been dying this was a piece that was dyed probably 2005 2006 but it's a very light lavendery purple um, and I started as I did back then on all my pieces in the dead center so this is on the dragon dreams section and that is all I got done um, and then I had a child <laughs> so that's that guy um, there is a little bit of um, Krynik in this like very little bit of and of course I haven't backstitched yet but um, since it's a dragon, it's out of print. Um, I have seen this one come up on eBay a few times, and it tends to be one that doesn't really get the super high prices like some of the other ones. So you can find it. Um, it's not quite as hard. Unfortunately, you know, Dragon Dreams is really the only one, I believe, of the three that is still actively designing. So, um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm sure because of one, because of Teresa's preferences with dragons, it's out of print. Um, but you can find copies on eBay if you take a look there. Um, my next piece was an adopted piece. I adopted this in 2004, and I know I adopted this from Annette at Annette Sager. Um, and this is a old piece. This was from Just Cross Stitch in 1998. There's the cover of it. And... This is Noah's Ark. Um, and then you go, why is the, the pagan girl stitching Noah's Ark? Um, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> um, th there's something, I mean, I, I was raised 
in a Christian home. Um, not superly like traditional restrictive, um, but I was raised Christian home. I still have a fond memory of that. And I still do like some of the Bible stories and some of the inspiration from them. And um, I mean, who doesn't like the story of the rainbow, right? So that's probably part of it. And of course it has animals on it. Um, my dream had been to have this done for a child when I had a little boy or a little girl so that they could have all the cute little animals there on the wall to look at. Um, hasn't happened. My son's now eight, so he's, he's past that point, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I adopted this from Annette and, um, in 2004, this is on 28 count white even weave in the called for DMCs. And most of the work that I have done on this has been on the animals down on the bottom. Um, most of the rest of it was done by Annette. Uh, all of the animals are done over one. And in the original chart, the one thing I am not doing, the original chart has all the names of the animals backstitched over one. Um, I didn't like how it looked. So I have taken those out and I'm just going to leave them as the animals. It just, it looked a little cluttered to me. So that is a decision I'm just making on my own. But that's where that one is. Uh, this one has come out off and on throughout the years, and it probably will be one that I still put higher up in my rotation to do. Um, just no plans yet. And who knows, it probably will come out, you know, when there's random like challenges um, that it fits for. I kind of put a little bit in and I do a little bit of the over one and then I go, okay, I'm done. Um, before I get back to the center of it, I'm going to get those animals done. I, I want to get the over one done and out of the way. I will say that since working on And They Sinned on the 56 count that I'm working it on, doing these animals over one on 28, which winds up being the same size, has gotten a lot easier. So once I get back to this, hopefully it will go faster. <laughs> hopefully. Um, so I've got two more pieces to show you today. Um, the first is Treetop Sampler. This was not on my list of projects to do. Um, and I, this was one of the charts that I didn't have. And then about four years ago, um, one of the girls in my stitching group, Sandy, passed away unexpectedly, young. Um, and it actually, the anniversary of that is coming up very, very soon. Um, and our stitching circle got together and at Sandy's sister's request, took care of handling her stitching stuff, going through it, um, taking pieces for ourselves to either stitch or, you know, we, we handled taking care of the stitching stuff to find a good homes. And if we didn't want it, we, we found ways to get it to people who would enjoy it because that's what Sandy would have liked. So because I'm the Wensler stitcher, Treetop Sampler came to live with me. Um, I have not touched this at all yet. Um, Sandy had really only thrown in a tiny bit and I'm willing, it, it's on even weave and the original calls for Glass Blue Monaco, which is a uh, 28 count. And I'm willing to bet that's probably what this is. So she has only put in that. So that is all Sandy's work. Um, but that will be getting done by me. I will finish the rest of this for her. I'm a little worried though, I will say, she's put it this way. And that has me a little concerned. Because um, <laughs> I would think it needed to go that way. But, oh, but you know what, maybe she, oh, maybe she just was doing the side and I'm thinking she was starting it down, but maybe actually she was working the side. So I'll, I'll guess it goes this way. <laughs> Once I get down to stitching it, we'll determine whether, which, which way it actually was going. But that's what she has done on it. So 
this piece of course will be done and then when it's when I have it framed I'll be thinking of my friend who has passed away um, and with birds and everything flying around and you know flitting from place to place um, it seems fitting as a good piece to remember her by. I have another piece of hers that is in my stash to stitch and uh, you'll see that probably coming up next year as I get onto a couple of pieces that I didn't touch this year that I didn't tend to. Um, okay, so the last piece I have to show you is Fantasy Trittich. And this comes from the Fantasy Collection number two, which I haven't, which is actually much better shape than the number one book of mine. I probably bought it years later. And this is the Fantasy Trittich. Um, it unfortunately is stuck a little bit into the groove there, so I'm going to flip it to the back in a moment to show you the whole piece without the, the binding closing on the, the picture. But it is a large piece. So, and here is, as you can see, hey look, Celestial Dragon's in here too. Um, that's the whole piece. Big, 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 big piece. Um, and this one is on 28 count even weave, white, with called for DMCs. And that's where this one is. Um, and I have done a decent amount of filling in the, um, the left-hand side. I just haven't stitched the person yet. This is another piece that I'm pretty sure I adopted, um, but I've done some decent work on this here and there. It's not, it, this wasn't quite in as much of a completed state when I picked it up. So I've done a little more work on this one. And again, apologies for the folding, <laughs> but that's what it's in the project bag for. Um, the one change on this one, and this was what uh, the original stitcher did and uh, I've decided not to change it, is that the background here is supposed to be done in 10 stitch, so in half stitches. Um, the, the stitcher here did it in whole stitches, and I'm okay with that, and I probably will continue that even though it's charted as 10 stitches. There's no back stitching, um, and if there were any back stitching, in there, I would just leave it out so that it looks like it's faded into the background and I just wouldn't make anything look sharp. Um, but it looked like it would, nothing was like quarter stitches where it's blatantly gonna look weird. Um, and I'm just one of those people, I'm not a big fan of 10 stitch unless there's a reason for it. So I'm okay with putting the whole stitches in there. Um, but that is the Wensler Parade. <laughs> Finally, I've only been promising this since what, like last February? So I'm sorry it took me this long. Um, I do have plans for, as what I originally wanted to do with this was also to show you how I kit a Wensler, because that seems to intimidate a lot of people, and especially with how do you kit blends. Um, but I'm going to group that into a video closer to the new year, on just in general preparing projects because let's face it the new year is going to be coming we're all going to be on the oh i want to start this and we're all going to be you know kit kidding things up and everything so i'm going to make a focus of one video just kidding projects and it'll be basic ones it'll be wenslers and i'm going to show you all that in another video uh look for that one sometime i want to say probably around Thanksgiving. I'll probably do it Thanksgiving weekend because that will make sense for me. Um, but until then, uh, I, I promise this won't be my last video until then. Um, until the next time I see you, be well, uh, enjoy your stitching, and I will see you again soon. Take care all. Bye.